Hello, this is Haka Dabin, and today we are going to be continuing with the Bellaverse with the story called I Finally Landed, but this place is not home. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Because wasting time is the last thing I want to do today. Because I'm already late. It's already 9 in the morning. The children of Merita ran up the Tower Warriors of God, where there were no trees left in heaven to watch the a sun. Mm, Ella was one of the first who climbed God's cities and watched the skies go from um, blue to red to green, then finally back. Like the other children, uh, when Mela, I'm gonna destroy her name because that is incredibly long would wake up the first thing she would do is get her feet blessed by Amri Aisha and travel to the city despite subsisting on the same food as all the other children Mela was quite grateful when traveling some say dancing throughout the ruins in a different era the children would get jealous of Mela's ability but in this world all they do is praise her for what could be the nature of Better versus worth when all was under the dominion of heaven. Mela uh, jumped from building to building, looking in below at the wonder of the city. Many districts had been submerged, others in eternal flame. But the worst was those districts that looked unchanged from the old times, because those were the places where Gears hunters lived. Deadly, dangerous men who ate human flesh and whose gaze could turn you to ash. Or so the stories go. She finally arrived at her favorite spot in the city. There was a sign near the top, of which was written in the ancient language. A traveler once came to God's city and told Mela that they both shared the same sound. She still remembered how he pronounced the tower's name, Metlife. Bella found an empty window while climbing and went in. They were told to not to go into the buildings and to stay outside, but Mela loved to learn about the old ones. She fashioned herself as a veritable a beller. The beller, an ancient man who they say traveled to every corner of the world and captured 10,000 wonders. He lived in a time when men were still able to swim in trees and when trees still grew. Some say this week, all that went avert, cut down last year in heaven, heaven, the beller was one who slew him, bringing balance to Marifa's world. Mela walked through the, a vast hallway, peeking into the rooms. Many were untouched, and still have had primeval or tablets and other small antiques. Suddenly, as her, her eyes glazed from one spot to another, she found herself looking at a treasure. It was a thin white sheet with a small drawing at the base. It was a tree. She quickly tore the image off and decided to leave the building. Boom! Mela instinctually jumped back and hid behind an office desk. Whatever made that blast was close by, perhaps only one story above or below her. She laid on a dilapidated wooden floor. And crawled to the window, sweat on her forehead, growing. That last could have been made by anything. A wonder, a god, a tribesman, and the great province of heaven. The priest told the young ones to flee when anything unusual happened in the city. And Mela stopped following the cosmic path years ago and vowed to follow the Bellar's wisdom. Mela looked over the edge of the window and saw the sound came one floor beneath her. She stepped under the glass and walked down the side and peeked into that bottom floor for the top of its window. Inside, she saw the cause of the noise. It was a capsule, smoking and shooting sparks like that of a traveling angel. She slid through the window, opening and, and, and leaped leap behind the top of the cabinet. <sighs> a hissing sound came from the capsule. A door jarred out, out from the side. A man walked out, clad in white. What shocked Mela was not the SCP logo on Cyber's shirt, the weapon in his hand, or how exotic his clothes were. It was that his skin was clear and clean. The only person that had soft-looking skin like that was 
Martha himself. Well, his eyes were peering up from the cabin and a man turned and glanced. She slipped down and attempted not to not be seen, but it was too late. <sighs> what the hell was that? Thought uh, Lieutenant Samson. He popped his head out of his lander. Where, where, where am I? This doesn't look like Omicron Noel. His eyes started around the room. Samson's hand fumbled around in his backpack until he, he found his pistol. He was on his way to meet an associate across worlds, but for some reason, the extra aversal jumper he was set and crashed into what seemed to be an abandoned building. There was dust, glass, and overall sense of melancholy everywhere. The desks were overturned, and there was a cracked glass panel to the side. Samson walked out of, it, out of the jumper, and he knew that was a shifting figure near an overturned cabinet. He held up his pistol. Samson and, and rushed forward. It was critical that he understood the totality of his surroundings. When he got near the cabinet, he sprang forward and aimed his gun. He didn't expect a child. <sighs> he could tell that I was a girl, but barely. She wore dirty rags and had a cloth covering a large portion of her face from her mouth to her neck. What was most intriguing were a number of carvings engraved on her face. There were four letters. M on the forehead, E on the left cheek, L on the right cheek, and A on her, her nose. I might still be on Earth for all I know. Hey there, do you speak English? The child stared at him, but her eyes were a curiosity rather than fear. That was a sentence. But I think I have something. Samson flipped off his backpack and opened the zipper. A simple movement frightened the child, so sorry to slide back. Don't worry. Shh. Spoke Samson, trying to act soft. Something that would shock the boys back home. Out of his bag, he pulled out a heart a bar of heart attack and stepped into. He put one half in his mouth and held the other in front of the child. The child took the biscuit and covered the cloth that was around her face. To Samson's surprise, the, cloth, the child's lips were sewn shut and there was a small gash in her throat. She broke the tack in very small pieces and slowly threw them in. Samson's idea that this was still his earth quickly faded. The child leaped over the cabinet and went near the capsule. She stared at it for a while and Samson came over. Her eyes glanced at the capsule and... They stopped at a, an unfamiliar image, a double circle with three prongs pointing inward with three edges. Is, is jutting out. Can you read? Samson dragged his fingers over the words as he said. These words say multiversal SCP. Mela's ears perked up. Before another word could be spoken, she lifted in front of Samson and in one hand grabbed an arrow and suddenly he pierced the arrow around him. For Samson, time seems to move down and has realized that they were just attacked. Samson brought out his, his pistol from his, his holder and squatted down. Mela leaped into Samson's back and guided him to the window. From there, she pointed where Samson could sleep. He clearly. Three hunters ready to catch their prey. Finally, some good du fun, laughed the lieutenant. The lieutenant started the ground and found an overturned car. There were only two or three stories above the ground, so he thought he could make a jump, so he did. Uh, 
Mela didn't expect that he would jump off the building. His feet were covered and she could tell he wasn't blessed. She grabbed on his back a, a, a tights and kept clinging as they collided with the ground. The clean man ran, dodging a great number of arrows and hid behind an esoteric machine. She always thought it was a decoration, but she never realized how great a shield it made. As the arrow started to bear the machine, the clean man started to speak words, but like before, she understood none of it. She peeked above the shield and saw the three hunters. They wore black cloaks, their faces covered in dark red paint. Two held bows and one was barehanded. Unexpectedly, the hunter saw up to firing and the bareheaded one started to speak. Lo, there are two things in, in the world, gods and men. If you are men, then you will die. If you are gods, then we will die. Let us live, die, and repeat the parent forever, for we are sons of gear. The clean men looked over the barrier fighters, mystical weapon at the hunters. Movement, fast and light. That's what Elof witnessed as the lead hunter grabbed the mental chunk that the clean men uh Ah, said the barehanded hunter as he closed his eyes. Gear blesses us today. One more lamb for the slaughter. The clean man said a few words to himself, then ran with his eyes closed. He raced through the debris with instincts as his only guide. Bell hung on to the man and looked back as the three hunters chased after. One took the air, er, one under the ground, and their leader stood still as if waiting for the man and to come to him. Hmm. To be continued. I believe we're missing a lot of context for what happened since this and the time of the Valor. Because as you know, the Valorverse actually takes place a long time before this. Sometime between the Valor or getting his name and him becoming any sort of legend. Either way. That was, I finally landed, but this place is not my home. I think I'm gonna title this video... Haku reads about the distant future of the distant future. <laughs> if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I don't know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but I have a strong suspicion that it's going to be more Bellaverse. Can you believe it? I should probably get back into the back rooms. Or I'll probably share this thing that I've been kind of falling down a rabbit hole of lately. I'll, I'll do Bellaverse for now. Anyway, see you tomorrow. Until then, goodbye!